Well, it looks like you made it, Willings. First job, and you made it. All we gotta do is find the sub and lock in. And here you are, swimming with your old teacher. Couldn't be much safer. All the luck, Willings. You got all the luck. Boy, there was a surprise to find myself suiting up with old Stoneface himself. Just last month, he was dropping me for 50 push-ups every time I turned around. Now, here we are, swim buddies, coming back from a job, a real job. And you made it, Willings. You made it. Hey, there's the sub. Guess old Stoneface can handle a compass after all. Sure gonna feel good to climb out of that chilly trunk into a warm sweatsuit for some hot coffee. First swimmer in trunk. First swimmer in trunk, aye. Second swimmer in trunk. Second swimmer in trunk, aye. You take us in, kid. I'm out of breath. Sure, Stoney. I'll take us in. Damn. I thought sure Stoney would run it on a real operation. I'm on my own now. Come on, memory. Work. I've got three main points where I can miss. If I miss on side door, I look like a fool. If I miss on blowdown, I can get me, or Stoney, or even the sub. If I miss on vent, I can get myself. Okay, that door's shut. Won't be any red lights coming on in con telling them I missed here. Side door, shut and dog. Side door, shut and dog, aye. Opening flood drain valve. Open flood, aye. Opening blow. Open blow, aye. This is a spooky one. Got to stay under 25 PSI. Too high, and Stoney and I are on the 150-foot decompression table. Or I could blow the top hatch off. Work, memory. Remember the classroom. Now, two things are happening when we blow down. One, the pressure is trying to open the side door and the top hatch against the dogs. And two, we're increasing our relative depth. Now, too much pressure, and we complicate our decompression. For instance, 50 PSI over bottom would take us over 100 feet deeper for decompression purposes. Or we could blow the top hatch off. The sub would probably have to surface. Now, need I say, gentlemen, that on a real job, a sub would not like being forced to surface. Shutting blow. Shut blow. Aye. Shutting flood drain valve. Shut flood. Aye. Now for the last part. I can't hurt the sub anymore. Just me. That comes almost as a relief. Okay. I've got to breathe normally when I open the vent. If I hold my breath, embolism. Stone sure stressed this one in the class. I want to be sure this point comes across. Remember, we're still under pressure. We're still on the bottom as far as our bodies are concerned. Now, the next step is open vent. We'll be coming to surface pressure at about a foot a second, just like coming up from a dive. And this is what I want you to remember. Just like coming up from a dive, you have got to breathe normally. Do not hold your breath. 10 feet is enough for air expansion to cause an embolism at shallow depths. 10 feet, gentlemen. And that's just 10 seconds, gentlemen. And embolism is usually fatal. Breathe normally. Opening vent. Open vent, aye. Shutting vent. Shut vent, aye. Open lower hatch. Watch your feet, froggies. Don't want to pinch your toes. Hey, which one of you dummies forgot to dump in? Secure for swimmer operations? Secure for swimmer operations, Act. Now, secure from swimmer operations. Secure from swimmer operations. All in one third. All in one third, aye. Pretty good swim, pal. Aside from you forgetting to dump your fins, you did a pretty good swim yourself. Stone face. All right. Let's get the big picture. Now, you know that we must be delivered to within swimming distance of our target, preferably without being seen. The submarine can do this for us. We lock out, we do what we came to do, we lock back in, we're on our way. Simple? Well, perhaps. If everything goes all right. 
So why do we spend so much time learning trunk procedure? Because the guy running the trunk is in a position to kill himself, to kill his swim buddy, or even to make a subsurface. And making a subsurface in the wrong place can lose his sub. And that's serious for sure. All right, now, what do we actually do when we lock out? Well, we get wet, we increase the surrounding pressure. Does that sound familiar? Now, for you wizards who may have guessed, we make a dive. We may not actually move up and down, but as far as our bodies are concerned, we dive, just like in the recompression chamber. All right, gentlemen. I now invite your attention to this ingenious drawing that's been cleverly designed to explain to you how the trunk piping functions. The WRT tank in the sub has been pressurized to drive the water up to the trunk. WRT flood valve, which we call flood drain, is opened to let water fill the trunk. The vent pipe is open to the sub and lets the air out as the water comes in. Now we shut the vent and the incoming water starts to build up pressure. The dive starts, same as leaving surface. When the water clears the upper lip of the side door, we shut flood drain. This stops the dive part way to the bottom. The side door is still being held shut by outside pressure. We crack the blow valve, letting pressurized air into the trunk. This starts the dive again. Soon as the pressure in the trunk is equal to outside, the door will open. You're on the bottom without a worry in the world. Samuel Willings, is all this clear to you? Yes, Chief Stone. Would you like to learn how to run a trunk in the unlikely event that you complete training? Yes, Chief Stone. I sure would. All right, well then, step up here to this uh, brilliantly executed facsimile of a mock-up. Let's try to get the operation down pat before we try it in the water. Now, gentlemen, I'm using Seaman Willings to demonstrate this operation to increase your confidence, because surely, if he can execute this skill, anyone can. You've got to realize that uh, this mock-up is just a sort of a schematic in a real trunk. Now, you'll soon see in ours here, everything's jammed up and crowded, and every sub is different. So you've got to get a good pre-op checkout. But it's all here. Emergency light, 31 MC speaker, air gauge, vent valve painted silver, blow valve painted black, and flood drain, which is usually painted green. Now, there are extra vent and blow pipes that are operated from forward torpedo room. They can also shut down your pipes and take control from there in event of an emergency. That's a good backup feature. But it's, uh, it's very embarrassing to have them take control just because you goofed. So when you get in a real sub, you pay attention, you find out where the valves are. Now, Chief McNair is going to assist us. He will be speaking as if you were in the forward torpedo room with responses to our operation checkouts. Okay, Willings, you're in the trunk, you check on the light and the 31 MC. Go ahead. Forward torpedo room. Trunk, checking 31 MC. This is forward torpedo room. Hear you loud and clear. How me, over? Same. Good. Now, you continue to get the correct communication response we go through this drill. Now, I'm going to also give you the emergency tap signal for each step. This is so you'll hear them once. Now, crack blow to see if you have air pressure and that it's shut. Then check vent and drain for shut and report. All valves checked, closed. Willings, you owe me 50 push-ups. Valves are shut, not closed. Now, try again and undog side door and report. All valves check shut. All valves check shut, I. Right? Emergency tap signal for all valves shut would be one. Pause two. Undogging side door. Undogging side door, I. Right? Emergency tap signal for undogging side door is five. Now, open vent and report. Opening vent. Opening vent, I. Right? Emergency tap signal for opening vent is two. 
Now, open flood drain and report. Opening flood drain. Opening flood drain, huh? Emergency tap for open flood drain is three. Now, when the water starts coming in, it'll drive the air out of the vent pipe. When the water reaches to just below the upper lip of the side door, you shut vent and report. Close. I mean shutting vent. Shutting vent. Emergency tap for shutting vent is two, pause two. All right. Now, the valves aren't going to be this easy to locate in a real sub's trunk. All you've got to do is lose track of where the vent is and the water keeps coming. If uh, the guys in the forward torpedo room don't move fast and the water starts pouring out of the vent pipe, you can fill the trunk right up, submerge that speaker, and have them take control from you. And there's a chance to be a real prize-winning dummy. But uh, let's say you do make it to the vent valve. And let's say you do remember how to tighten. The water will continue to rise, but much more slowly. It'll stop at this level. Now, that's just above the upper lip of the side door. This is where the dive starts. You'll have to clear your ears. Now, when the water reaches this level, shut flood drain and report. Shutting flood drain. Shutting flood drain, huh? Emergency tap for shutting flood drain is three. Pause two. All right, now you're part way to the bottom. To reach bottom and exit the trunk, you've got to equalize pressure with the outside. You do this by cracking blow. Now go ahead, crack blow and report. Opening blow. Opening blow, I. Right? Shutting blow. Shutting blow, I. Right? Emergency tap for shutting blow is four. Pause, two. When the pressure's equalized, the side door will crack open. Side door open. Side door open, I. Right? Emergency tap for side door open is five. Now you're on the bottom. Now you'll have to push that side door open all the way till it catches on the outside latch. Now the swimmers exit the trunk. The last man shuts and dogs the side door. The emergency tap for shut and dog side door is five, pause two. We shut and dog the side door so that the trunk can be recycled by the sub. That'll be fine, Willie. You can sit down now. All right, let's say that uh, for some reason you're just riding this trunk as an operator. Now, that little dome of air is going to get stale pretty quick. So you're going to have to know how to ventilate. All right? Our chart can show you about this. One thing to remember is that blow can always override vent. You open vent. And the water starts to rise. Then you crack blow and keep the water level where it belongs. Too much blow and air will bubble out the side door. Not enough and the water level will rise. Like most things in diving, with a little practice, it's a piece of cake. Those of you gentlemen who graduate might find themselves working off a very special sub. It's been designed just for swimmer operations. USS Grayback. You can work off the Grayback for a month and never touch a valve. Instead of a trunk, you lock out of a hangar. It has room for a whole platoon and more. But the subs divers run it. You just ride. There's one situation where the training you get here will still apply. The Grayback has a small transfer trunk for locking one or two swimmers and their equipment into the hangar. At first, it looks different but it functions the same as a standard fleet sub trunk. So let's leave the gray back for the future and return to standard operations. There are a few things you ought to know about riding the outside of a sub. Sometimes you might find yourself riding out there for quite a while. Now, if your rig fails, or if you want to save your gas, there are always lungs with single hose regulators lashed on deck. But locate them before you die. Tap signals can be delivered between you and the sub. Six taps means you or the sub does not understand the message or the status. A series of three taps means return to the trunk. Now, the most important one, and one you better make sure to remember, is the emergency surface signal, which is seven or more taps. By the time you realize that they're taps and not just noise, it's too late. 
so seven or more amounts of steady tapping. When you hear a steady tapping, leave the sub. It's going to service. Now, it's very easy to realize it's too late. And let me tell you, gentlemen, that riding the deck of a surfacing sub is a real thrill. As she clears the surface, the water running off is trying to take you over the side. Now, if that happens, you are going to get some bruises. So if it looks like it's too late, you grab a piece of that sub and hang on like it was a $100 bill. All right, I left one thing out. Anybody guess? Yes, McCracken. If there's a chance of going over or staying, what do you do about your swim buddy? Good question. Well, what do you do, gentlemen? Now, you don't want to leave your swim buddy, but in a circumstance like this, the force of the water might separate you. You can only be thinking and careful and ready. Now, there's another complication, and that's if the sub is turning. It shouldn't, but it might. And if you're sure the sub is turning, you get off on the inside of the turn. Let me show you why. We'll say the sub is turning left. Now, if you get off on the right, which might seem natural, here's what happens. Stern keeps following you. And if those screws catch up to you, you may never finish training. On the other hand, you get off inside of the turn, the screws are going away from you. Okay, outside of the sub, know where the emergency rigs are. Six taps means I do not understand. Three, three, three means return to the trunk. Seven or more means emergency surface, leave the sub. Now, if you know which way it's turning, you get off on the inside of the turn. Let's find out how to get back into the sub. We'll use the drawing to see how the piping works first. At the start of lock-in, the side door is shut and dogged. The trunk is flooded and at outside pressure. WRT tank gets vented by the forward torpedo room crew. All valves are shut. Flood drain valve is opened, and blow is cracked to drive the water out. When the water has drained, shut blow and flood drain. Now the trunk is dry, but still under pressure or at depth. Next, the vent is opened. This is like the time of leaving bottom. When the pressure is vented off, we are on the surface. The dive is over. Okay, Willings, you got us out. Now you can get us back in. You want to step in the mock-up? Now you completed your swim. You're through the side door. Report, shut and dog the side door. First swimmer in trunk. First swimmer in trunk, I. Right? Side door, shut and dog. Trunk, this is Todd. Side door is not shut and dog. All right, that was just a curveball to show you something that could have happened. When you're locking in, you're usually pretty tired from a swim, and you could get the door just partway closed. If that happens, Con gets a red light. It makes you look pretty foolish. So you make sure that door is shut and dog before you report. Try it again, Williams. Side door, shut and dog. Side door, shut and dog. The emergency tap signal for side door shut and dog is Willings. The emergency tap signal for side door shut and dog is five taps, pause two taps. Right. Now comes the tricky part. We're going to try to use the pressure from blow to speed the draining process, but we must control this carefully. Now, each sub has its own maximum. Usually, it's 25 PSI. Now, two things are happening. One, the pressure is trying to open the side door and the top hatch against the dogs. And two, we are increasing our relative depth. Too much pressure, and we complicate our decompression. For instance, 50 PSI over bottom would put us over 100 feet deeper for decompression purposes. Or, could blow the top hatch off. The sub would probably have to surface. Now, need I say again that on a real job, a sub would not like being forced to surface. Okay, Willings? Open flood drain and blow down, and keep in mind how serious this step is. Opening flood drain. Opening flood drain, ah. The emergency tap signal for opening flood drain is... Helleran. That's three taps, Chief. Right. Opening blow. Opening blow, ah. Emergency tap signal, McNabb. Opening blow valve, four taps, Chief. Right. 
Now, in actual operation, it'll take a couple of minutes for the trunk to drain. But we'll assume that the trunk has drained. Proceed, Willings. Shutting blow. Shutting blow, huh? All right, the emergency tap signal. Sanders. Four taps, pause, two taps, Chief. Very good. Shutting flood drain. Shutting flood drain, huh? Emergency tap for shutting flood drain. Watkins. Flood drain, that's three taps, Chief. All right. Now, I want to be sure this point comes across. Remember, we're still under pressure. We're still on the bottom, as far as our bodies are concerned. The next step is open vent. We'll be coming to surface pressure at about a foot a second, just like coming up from a dive. And this is the point I want you to remember. Just like coming up from a dive, you have got to breathe normally. Do not hold your breath. 10 feet is enough for air expansion to cause an embolism at shallow depths. 10 feet. That's just 10 seconds, gentlemen. An embolism is usually fatal. Breathe normally. OK, take us up, Willings. Opening vent. Opening vent. The emergency tap signal, uh, Mr. Nose. Uh, two, Chief. All right. Now all there is to do is uh, open the lower hatch, shut the vent, blow out the fog that will have developed, check all the valves for shut. Then you can climb out of that chilly trunk into a warm sweatsuit and have a hot cup of coffee. And that's what we're going to do. We'll take a coffee break and then tank drill. Are there any questions? Yes, I have a question, Chief Stone. Yes, please? I've heard of things happening, like a sea snake getting into the trunk. What do you do in a case like that? Well, Willings, if you'd been paying attention during lectures, the answer would be obvious. You hold the snake's nose while blowing to help him clear his ears. Then you advise the snake to breathe normally during ascent to avoid embolism. <laughs> <laughs> Training in the tank was a breeze. There was always an instructor to grab the handle if you got in trouble. But you sure got the feel of it lugging twin tanks up that ladder and jamming your way into the trunk. If a guy were Quasti, he'd sure lose the bubble when they close the lower hatch and the water starts in. But everything was nice and smooth, slipping out into the tank, plenty of control. Okay, good dive. You two students next, dive and lock in. Sub-ops was a different story. When you and another guy from training climb that ladder in the forward torpedo room for the first time, and there isn't going to be an instructor along, things start to get tight. All valves check shut. All valves check shut, aye. Undog side door. Undog side door, aye. Opening vent. Open vent, aye. Opening flood drain. Open flood, aye. Shut vent. Shut vent, aye. Mark, leaving the service. Start the dive. Shutting flood drain. Shut flood, aye. Opening blow. Open blow, aye. Shutting blow. Side door open. Shut blow. Side door open, aye. For me, I finally started to feel like I was going to be a team member. That is one fine feeling. 